If you have fibromyalgia, there are three letters you really need to know about. LDN. LDN stands for low-dose naltrexone, and it is a unique treatment that reduces fibromyalgia pain by reducing neuroinflammation. I'm Dr. Ginevra. I'm a physician with fibromyalgia myself, and I'm on a mission to share all the empowering and inspirational knowledge needed to defeat this illness. I call this being fibro-fierce. Central sensitization is one of the most well-understood aspects of fibromyalgia pain. In central sensitization, the brain and spinal cord have become hypersensitized or more sensitive to pain signals. Essentially, they amplify any pain signals that come into them. We know that neuroinflammation is a really key component of developing central sensitization, and in particular, glial cells, which are the immune cells of the brain, become abnormally activated in fibromyalgia, and they generate neuroinflammation. And this uh, image on the left here is positron emission tomography or PET brain scans of fibromyalgia patients that show widespread glial activation in fibromyalgia brains that are not seen in the brains of healthy controls. Low-dose naltrexone is a treatment that specifically addresses the neuroinflammation component of fibromyalgia pain. I'm going to talk about that in this video. Central sensitization and neuroinflammation are just one part of fibromyalgia pain. I encourage you to check out my book, The Fibro Manual, where I go into the full story of both fibromyalgia pain, other symptoms, and how to treat it. Low-dose naltrexone acts via specific receptors on the glial cells, those immune cells of the brain, to essentially force them back into hibernation or back into their resting anti-inflammatory state. In fibromyalgia, what's happened is they become abnormally activated and are releasing a lot of pro-inflammatory and excitatory chemicals. And that inflammatory soup essentially contributes to the development of central sensitization. Anything that we can do to lower neuroinflammation in fibromyalgia helps, and low-dose naltrexone in particular is one of the strongest way, ways we have to do that. Naltrexone is an opioid blocker. It blocks opioid receptors, and this is how it is helpful in both alcohol and opioid addiction. It is FDA approved for use in those indications at its 50 milligram strength. When we're talking about low-dose naltrexone, we're talking about it at levels of 4.5 milligrams or under. And to get there, typically you have to have, a, have it compounded because it does not come in any strength lower than 50 milligrams. But you may be saying to yourself, how could an opioid blocker actually help reduce pain? And that's a very good question. We know that actually when it's used in uh, lower doses, that it's not its effects on the opioid receptor that are helping with pain, but it's actually the effects it's having on the glial cells, and it works via different receptors, not opioid receptors, on these glial cells to basically reduce, calm them down so they're not generating so much neuroinflammation, and it's actually that reduction of neuroinflammation that reduces central sensitization and reduces pain. And we know that it's not the opioid receptors where the activity is for low-dose naltrexone, because when they take naltrexone and change the molecule slightly so that it no longer fits into the opioid receptors, but it still fits into the receptors on the glial cells, it, it still retains its effect on lowering neuroinflammation. There is theories, though, that naltrexone, even at the low dose of low-dose naltrexone, might actually be somehow upregulating endorphins by kind of causing a temporary blockade of those opioid receptors. That's certainly possible, but what we know for sure is that its activity at the glial cells is really where the pain-reducing effects of low-dose naltrexone are. Two studies from Stanford University showed benefit for low-dose naltrexone in fibromyalgia pain. The first was a smaller pilot study followed by a larger double-blind crossover study. They both showed similar results with about 60% of subjects reporting a pain reduction of a third or more. 
Over 50% of patients reported feeling globally very much improved or much improved with low-dose naltrexone. Interestingly, it took about eight weeks before the benefit was noted. Generally, low-dose naltrexone was well-tolerated. Side effects were mild, but included things like headache, vivid dreams, insomnia, and anxiety. And interestingly, subjects that had higher levels of sedrate, which is a marker of inflammation in the blood that may reflect higher levels of neuroinflammation, those that had higher sed rates actually were more likely to report pain reduction. Now it's a bit confusing because typically we're told that the standard markers of inflammation like sed rate and CRP are normal in fibromyalgia. But what they were looking at is really those that were on kind of the high normal level compared to the lower normal, which group were more likely to report benefit. And it was really those that were on the high normal or high end of things. And again, I think that probably reflects either globally higher levels of inflammation or more likely higher levels of neuroinflammation, which would make sense because we know low dose naltrexone addresses neuroinflammation. When using low dose naltrexone in the clinic, there's a few things to keep in mind. First is it's an off-label use and the medication needs to be compounded, so it needs to be made at a compounding pharmacy. Insurance sometimes won't pay for compounded medications, and in that case, the monthly out-of-pocket cost usually is somewhere in the $50 to $60 range. If that is something that a patient can afford, I think it's definitely worth a try. Need to do it for at least two months, though, ideally three, before you judge whether it's helpful for you or not because just like what they saw in the studies, it does seem to take about six to eight weeks before the max benefit starts to be seen with, with low-dose naltrexone. Certainly I've seen patients get a benefit much earlier within a few weeks, but I think if you're gonna try it, give it at least a two to three month trial so you can really judge whether it was helpful for you or not. Typical dosage is 4.5 milligrams at bedtime, but I have seen it done all the way from three, three milligrams at bedtime up to five milligrams twice daily. Typically, dosage escalation is something like 1.5 milligrams a day for two weeks, three milligrams a day for two weeks, then up to 4.5 milligrams. However, if somebody is sensitive to medications or has a lot of side effects, I'll start much lower, I'll dosage escalate much more slowly and sometimes I'll aim to end at more like that three milligram range because I really want to make sure that somebody is tolerating it and to try to minimize side effects. One of the more challenging side effects of low dose naltrexone, at least when I first started prescribing it, is I noticed a lot of my patients would report more anxiety once they started it. I experimented with adding in CBD along with low-dose naltrexone, and not only did that seem to help reduce the prevalence of any anxiety as a side effect, it seemed to make the low-dose naltrexone work better. Makes sense because both CBD and LDN have a known effect to reduce neuroinflammation. So they seem to together have a complementary effect where they really give a, a pretty significant reduction in neuroinflammation, which can result in a significant reduction in, in pain. I'd love to see a study where they did LDN plus CBD for fibromyalgia. If, I mean, sleep side effects usually are mild and typically would get better within the first week, but if somebody has prolonged sleep disturbance, I'll just move it to morning dose or uh, try lowering the dose. The biggest challenge with low dose naltrexone, at least in the fibromyalgia clinic or when you're when you're managing fibromyalgia patients is a lot of fibromyalgia patients are on an opioid as part of their pain management strategy. And because naltrexone is an opioid blocker, it does not play very well with opioids for the most part. And the conventional wisdom is to not give somebody on an opioid low dose naltrexone. I have found that there are certain ways and certain circumstances where it can be done if it's done carefully. I go into those in a separate video linked in the description below. If you want to learn more about low-dose naltrexone, find low-dose naltrexone friendly doctors or pharmacies near you. I encourage you to check out 
ldnresearchtrust.org. In the meantime, stay fierce.